Hey folks, Kim MacArthur here, best-selling author of Impact, How to Get Noticed, Motivate Millions, and Make a Difference in a Noisy World, and also The Impact Factor, How Small Actions Change the World. Both of those are available on Amazon. If you just do a search for Ken MacArthur, you'll find them and you'll get good uh, information there. This is our Impact Action Team Open Webcast open to everybody on the internet and all throughout the world uh, and you can invite people to come right now and join us if you just uh, uh, send them the URL that is actually sitting down in the chat area uh, it's kenmacarthur.com forward slash open the more people that get in on this webcast the more people are going to learn about the powerful powerful ways that we can really raise the bottom line by taking real actions that work uh, in our funnel systems and we have the ultimate expert here today with us Todd Brown has been doing this for a long long time and I'm really really excited about the webcast today uh, Todd began marketing online in 2003 and he quickly took multiple niche, niches by storm or niches depending on where you are in the world he was the brains behind the enormous launch of the first patent pending multimedia marketing system for chiropractic physicians and he skyrocketed one of his companies to the position of number one largest provider of marketing and business growth training for the bodywork professionals industry <clears throat> and he's also co-orchestrated co multiple six figures launches with the internet marketing community Todd was uh, a partner at Strategic uh, Profits with Rich Sheffron he was a faculty member for Jeff Walker's uh, $10,000 per person product launch manager training and he's presented his ideas and methodologies on the same stage with best-selling authors Brian Tracy and Michael Gerber. Todd is recognized as one of the foremost authorities at engineering marketing funnels that produce leads and customers often at triple or quadruple the average value experienced by competitors. We could all use that. Welcome to the webcast, Todd. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm uh, excited to be here today, Ken. Well, um, let me um, remember to show your, uh, your wonderful picture so uh, people will know what a good-looking guy you are and we'll want to oh. come, we'll come see you uh, in uh, Arlington. We're meeting down in Arlington, uh, Virginia, which is suburbs of Washington, D.C. on May the 17th through the 19th. It's going to be a great, great time together. And Todd is one of our featured speakers there. If you... Uh, don't know about JV Alert Live? You definitely want to check out JVAlertLive.com uh, because there's going to be a, a great group of people that are coming, uh, you know, from all around the world actually to join us there, both experts and attendees. Uh, oftentimes, those attendees are just as amazing as the experts who who come. Uh, and uh, Todd is not just uh, you know the only speaker there. We're going to have some amazing folks. David Hancock from uh, Morgan Jaden's Publishing. Uh, David's published many of the top books in New York Times bestsellers, including Brendan Burchard's The Millionaire Messenger, and he can help you get your own book published um, and where it needs to be. And then there's Sam Crowley. Sam Crowley is a f uh, former Fortune 100 executive who launched the personal development brand Every Day is Saturday. He's also a best-selling author, speaker, and business coach. Um, you know, <laughs> Sam would uh, get home, uh, you know, in the evening just to, you know, in time to lay his daughter, um, Madeline, down to bed each night. I know that uh, family is really important to Todd, too. And one of the advantages that we have by working on the Internet and living the Internet lifestyle, so to speak, is that we have the flexibility to be with our kids. I know I'm going out uh, tomorrow to pick up my son from Penn State, so uh, sometimes when you have a job, you can't do that kind of stuff, but I'll get uh, at least four hours solid with my son trapped in a car where he can't get away <laughs> from me, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, anyway, Sam Crawley's going to be there. He um, he resigned uh, his uh, corporate job and you know started an incredible entrepreneurial journey you'll be excited to meet him there and uh, he's gonna help people you know 
uh, do what they truly love to do, and, and uh, that's uh, an amazing thing to be able to do. Uh, lots of other people. Um, Don Allen uh, Rico is coming in all the way from Spain to be with you and talk about video stuff. Uh, Diane Conklin is going to be there with us. Uh, the amazing Bob Jenkins, Bob the Teacher Jenkins, if you don't know Bob, uh, is going to be there. He's a fantastic uh, guy that can kind of give you, give you the 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 stuff where you're starting out you don't know what to do and it's one two three and just uh, presented in a way that only Bob can do and we'll have a few other uh, surprise uh, guests uh, Robert Smith is coming in uh, he's an amazing PR expert um, and he's going to be demonstrating some of the stuff that he is doing and then we have a series of 10 minute presentations in which top people uh, will be uh, presenting their best ideas. That's exciting uh, to have a, a group of speakers that are going to actually be giving you their best resources. That was one of the things that we introduced at JV Alert Live Orlando, and we had a, a great time with that. It was lots of fun, lots of great information in a very quick time frame, and so we decided to do it again in Arlington. So let's move right on to Todd, and Todd, I'm going to actually <clears throat> set up the, um, the, the presentation so that you get to be the presenter, and so it should be coming up on your screen right now. Okay, let me see here. I got it. Okay, cool. So am I set to jet? Am I good to go? You're good to go. <laughs> All right, awesome. So, um, well, thank you again, Ken, for um, for having me here, for opening your family. Like I said, uh, you know, at the last JV um, Alert Live event, you know, for introducing me, bringing me in with open arms to your family. I, I greatly appreciate it. And, and so, like Ken said, my name is Todd Brown from marketingfunnelautomation.com, um, and I also want to personally thank you for being here today. Today we're going to keep things really um, informal, but, um, but don't mistake informal for lacking in content and value. I promise you that at the end of this little preview training session, you're, you're going to walk away a better marketer a more equipped entrepreneur and I don't take that or say that lightly and so what we're going to be talking about today is why strategizing engineering and ultimately optimizing a customer acquisition marketing funnel is priority number one for your business why having that new customer or what is commonly referred to as a front-end marketing funnel is the absolute most important, most critical thing for you to have in place for your business. Now, like Ken said, and like I mentioned, this is really a preview. It's a kind of a mini, mini snapshot of a small portion of what um, I am going to be presenting at the uh, JV uh, Alert Live event in Arlington, Virginia. Um, and I get a full-blown 90 minutes to um, to share with you and normally if you've heard me or if you've seen me speak before you've been on any of my trainings or anything like that you know I have a tendency to speak very quickly um, because I try to pack as much content into uh, into an hour or 90 minutes as I possibly can and so the 90 minute presentation that I give uh, at JV Alert Live is probably the equivalent of two and a half to three hours worth of content, jam packed. Fantastic. And so, um, so what? Um, I I, I want to start off real quick with kind of just a, a quick housekeeping, and then I promise I'm going to jump in and we're going to get down and dirty with this stuff today. Um, and that is that I would really highly encourage you to go to JV Alert Live. Um, I don't often. Um, travel, like Ken said, I've got um, I've got two little girls, a 12 year old and uh, and um, and a 10 and a half year old, 17 months apart. I love being around them every day, being with them, you know, spending quality time with them and my wife. Just the most important thing for me um, is uh, is 
my, my family. Um, but I can tell you that I very recently went to the JV Alert Live in Orlando, and I was reminded of the power of getting out and getting to live events. Not just for the content, not just for the stuff that is learned at these events, but for the networking, the relationships that are developed, the doors that are open for you, the opportunities that you get. Um, it, it's kind of like, you know, it, it, it puts all of those opportunities and those relationships and those net, net, the, the, the networking that gets done there, it's like on hyperdrive. It's double, triple, quadruple the speed that you'll accomplish um, you know, over the telephone or over the internet. Just things happen at live events. Introductions are made, relationships, JVs, strategic alliances are, are, are formed. Um, and just so I would highly encourage you to be there um, if for no other reason than for the opportunity to get around other extremely savvy entrepreneurs all looking to experience breakthroughs in their, um, in their business. And of course, if that doesn't excite you, I would encourage you to be there, if for nothing else, then for my presentation. So um, with that being said, let's get, uh, let's get to it today. So before we jump in and, and, and get talking about um, the specifics of, of actually strategizing your funnel and why that's so important and, and metrics and whatnot, I want to talk about a, a blog post, and an essay, an article that I published um, just just the other day. I think it was uh, it was not it wasn't yesterday. It was the day before, and it was uh, as you can see here. This is a screenshot. The title is "Why Common IM List Building Is a Distortion," and I want to get your head around this as we go in and begin talking about and dissecting the whole idea of engineering your own uh, your own funnel and why it's so important and. There is this, what I believe to be, as like I said here, a distortion within the internet marketing community. Very common in the inter internet marketing community is this idea of list building. If you've been around internet marketing for any significant length of time, you've heard the topic list building talked about uh, on many occasions. It's one of the most popular topics within IM, and it's one of the, the, the hot buttons, the buzz words, if you will, within the internet marketing community. And it's something that lots of internet marketers focus a significant amount of their attention on building a, a list of leads, right? Lead generating, having a, uh, a squeeze page, an opt-in page where they give away a lead magnet and, uh, and they're building their list of, of leads, of prospects. And you often hear quoted sizes of lists. You hear things like, you know, uh, I've got 100,000 people on my list or um, you know, 120,000, or uh, you know, at Strategic Profits, we had over 200,000 people on our list, and um, and there's this focus on list building in this context. In this context, being building li a list of leads. Well, the distortion is that it's it's a distortion of the original concept of lead generation, direct response lead generation, as popularized by uh, Dan Kennedy uh, over a decade ago, and it's sometimes referred to as two-step marketing. See, the original plan, the original concept behind lead generation um, was that a marketer, uh, a, a, an entrepreneur, would would offer a free piece of information, valuable information, to targeted prospects in exchange for their contact information so that the marketer could then deliver follow-up marketing messages to the prospect that were designed to make the sale and ultimately convert them into a new customer. See, the intention, the original objective of uh, of direct response lead generation was never just to generate leads. It was never just to build an ever-growing list of prospects, of possible leads. It was to get the individual's contact information so we can plug them into a multi-step sequential follow-up system that was strategically designed to make the sale, that was designed to sell them on that, that front-end product, right? To convert them into a customer. See, today, so many internet marketers are focused on generating traffic 
to generate leads. And they talk about every day how, how much bigger their list is growing. And when they refer to their list, they're talking about prospects. Well, that's very different. In fact, it's completely opposite from the way the biggest direct response marketing companies look at their lists and analyze their marketing. Companies like Agora and Boardroom and Weiss Financial, uh, um, Stansberry Research, and so on. When, you know, I, I, I'm fortunate in that I live in South Florida, and um, and I, I've uh, I've become friends with uh, Mark Ford, who uh, writes under the pen name of Michael Masterson, uh, best-selling author, eight New York Times bestsellers. Um, he's the brains behind Agora, which is about a $600 million a year information marketing uh, empire, a behemoth, if you will. And what they look at every day is how many new customers did they generate and how big is their active customer list getting. They're not interested in generating or, or building these vast lists of prospects. They're interested in building vast lists of customers, right? And, and so the thing that I want to really leave you with as we go into these funnels is that I had this kind of this perspective change where I, I kind of, and I want to convey this to you, and I want you to get this, that, you know, looking at these, these huge lists of, of, of prospects, these, these individuals, let's say, that, um, you know, have whatever, 50,000 person email lists, um, and, you know, 50,000 people have gone through whatever kind of funnel they have in place. You know, 50,000 people went to their, um, went to their squeeze page and opted in and then got their lead magnet and went through their videos or their PDF or whatever, and, and you know, out of the 50,000, you know, whatever, you know, 49,000, you know, didn't buy, and that's the thing, that's the thing that hit me, that you know, that you're not looking to build a list of prospects that go through your funnel and don't buy. That's not what you're in, in the business of, right? You're, you're in the business of acquiring new customers, not leads, period. The only reason why we generate leads, the only reason why we generate leads is so that we can plug those individuals into a multi-step sequential, multi-channel follow-up system. And today, we call that multi-step, sequential, multi-channel follow-up system a marketing funnel. That is what a marketing funnel is. And so what I want you to start to immediately think about and focus on every day, every week, every month, is not the size of how big your prospect list is getting. Because really, excuse me, if your prospect list is growing and growing and growing, that just means that your marketing funnel is not working. What should be growing and growing and growing is your customer list. That's what you want to look at because as that grows, that's a good sign. That's, that's how you grow your business with a focus on your, your customer list. And so I want you to begin looking at how your customer list is growing day to day, week to week, and month to month. And I want you to pay attention to how well your marketing funnel, whatever process you have in place right now that takes a person from lead, from opting in, giving you their contact information, whatever process you have in place that, uh, that happens after they give you their contact information, I want you to start to monitor how well that process is converting those leads into customers and ultimately what those customers are worth to you right away, in other words, how much money do you extract on that on the initial transaction, and ultimately, and we're going to talk about this today, how much is a lead worth that comes to, uh, excuse me, a visitor worth that comes to your website? So if you get if you have a hundred people that come to your squeeze page, there's a certain percentage that opt in. Out of the percentage that opt in, uh, there's a certain percentage that will buy very quickly, a certain percentage that will buy in the middle of your funnel, and ultimately a certain percentage that will buy towards the end of your funnel. And so there's a certain amount of money that you brought in from those, those 100 visitors, right? You got 100 visitors, you have a certain percentage that opt in, a certain percentage that buy, there's a certain amount of money that you generate, which tells us how much those 100 visitors were worth, which ultimately tells us what the average visitor is worth. And you need to monitor that, and we're going to get into, um, into that today. 
But so I want you to keep your eye on this whole idea that you're in the business of acquiring new customers and not leads. Now, the way most marketers go about or think about the acquisition of customers is, um, is you know, they, they look at this formula that no doubt if you've been around internet marketing, you've, you've seen this many times before. Um, and it's this idea that, right, that traffic plus conversions equals more money. Well, the, the problem is that most internet marketers place way too much emphasis on traffic. They think that it's all about traffic. They think that if they increase traffic and they, they get more traffic, that their problems will be solved. Well, in some cases, not only will their problems not be solved, but in some cases, they'll simply go out of business that much quicker. For example, if there was a, a marketer, if, if there's an individual who is weak in the conversion department, if they're not converting traffic profitably, if they're not recouping their money, and we're going to get into this today, if they're not recouping their money from their, their traffic, if they're spending money, if they're doing paid advertising, media buys, if they're doing Google AdWords, uh, you know, Microsoft Ad Center, Facebook advertising, banner advertising, if they're doing solo email ads, if they're doing any number of of uh, of paid advertising um, methods, and they're and they don't have the conversions aren't there, meaning that they're not converting enough of those visitors into customers. If they increase the amount of money that they spend on traffic, all they're going to do is go through their money that much quicker. All they're going to do is burn up their money that much quicker. See the emphasis shouldn't be on traffic. The emphasis should be on conversions, right? It's the converting of traffic into paying customers. It's the conversion that is where today a business online is made or broken, right? And that's why your number one priority is always converting traffic into paying customers. It's not generating leads. It's not creating all different kinds of lead magnets. Your priority is not even, it's not testing, it's not creating blog posts, it's not SEO, it's not backlinking. All of those things are a means to an end. Ultimately, your business is made or broken based on how well you convert traffic into paying customers, right? And so it's, it, it is currently, regardless of what stage your business is at, whether it's a startup, brand new, or whether you're a grizzled veteran, it, you're, you're, it, it, will, it is and it always will be your number one priority. And frankly, one of the things that I learned from Michael Masterson, I got to give uh, Mark credit for this, is that your ability to do this is the lifeblood of your business. Stability and consistency in cash flow, income, business growth, all come from how well you can convert traffic into new customers, right? And so anytime a business, even, it, listen, if a business has a, a, a tremendous volume of existing customers, of existing customers, but they begin to take their eye off of the, the front end conversion, the acquisition of new customers, if they t take their eye off of the front end conversions and begin focusing a majority of their attention on their back end, they will eventually get into trouble because the stability in a business comes from the, the ability to consistently turn prospects into customers, the ability to consistently acquire new customers. That's why I say that it's the lifeblood of your business. That's why at companies like uh, Agora, for example, they put their best, most talented people, their best, most talented copywriters, their, their most creative copywriters, their, their most skilled copywriters with the most winners on the front end, meaning that they have them working on the promotions, the ideas, the headlines, the sales letters, the leads, the sales letter leads that are all going to prospects to sell them on their first transaction, on their first product purchase. They have the less skilled, the less creative, the less, the less experienced working on the back-end offers, the offers that go to existing customers. 
Because, as you know already, if you've been around for um, any significant length of time, you know that the most difficult purchase, the most difficult transaction to make happen is the front-end transaction, the first transaction. Right? That's the most difficult transaction. It's also the most expensive transaction to make happen, whereas the second and third and fourth transaction are all easier transactions. And a as additional transactions happen, they become easier and easier to make happen because the trust is there, the authority, the credibility, and so on are all there. And so your ability to convert traffic into paying customers is the lifeblood of your business. And I share that with you and I hammer it home so much on this, on this little preview training because I want to make sure that that's what you're focusing on every day. It's why I say to you, you're not looking at and you're not shooting for an ever-growing prospect list you're looking to see how well is your engine, how well is your marketing, how well is your current funnel turning those prospects into paying customers for you. And that's why it's this conversion. This formula is accurate. It's accurate. The problem is when, you, when a marketer focuses on one, traffic, 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 without the other, right? It's very rare, at least in my um, coaching clients and my um, consulting clients, it's very rare that I see somebody who, um, who lacks a traffic, uh, excuse me, who lacks traffic or traffic is the problem, you know, um, uh, where they're overly focused on conversions. That's very rare, right? The, the, the more common thing is that they're overly focused on traffic. See, it's it's, you know, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute, but it's, it's almost never traffic, right? First of all, today, compared to when I first got online um, over 10 years ago, there's no shortage of traffic sources today. You know, I know of and have on our list internally over 33 different channels and sources that you can use, uh, or methods, I should say, to generate traffic, um, including, you know, um, paid and non-paid um, traffic generation methods. Right, years ago, traffic was the hottest thing, it was the hottest topic, um, and it, it unfortunately is still pretty hot today, but it was, you know, it, there were only a handful of traffic generation sources, traffic generation methods um, for you to use. Right, today, that's not the case at all. There's, there is a ton from PPZ, PPC, um, CPV, um, there's social, there's Facebook advertising, there is um, there's search engine optimization, there's banner advertising, there's contextual advertising, there's CPA, there's affiliates, there's joint ventures, there's article distribution, press release distribution, video distribution, there's forum posting. I mean, my gosh, we could go on and on and on about the sources of traffic today. And so nine out of 10 times when it comes to why is a business, why is an entrepreneur struggling, why is the business not growing, why is the, the, the entrepreneur's income not growing, right? They're sitting there at the computer wondering, scratching their head, what am I doing wrong? What aren't I doing that all the other people are doing that I hear making all of this money? Well, well I can tell you for sure that it's almost never a traffic problem. It's almost never a lack of traffic, right? It, it's the, the reality is that it's almost always a conversion problem. It's a lack of conversion. See, because if, if you have conversions, if you have the ability, if you have a funnel in place, a funnel, a, a strategically engineered, designed, and optimized marketing funnel in place that allows you to convert prospects into customers, you can very easily and very quickly scale your business with paid advertising. You'll never lack traffic. There's no lack of traffic when today you can go out and pay for it. Right? Years ago, we didn't have the same media buying opportunities that the biggest companies online do. Today, we have the very same opportunities they do. We have the very same retargeting technology. We have the very same media buying, the very same contextual advertising, the very same CPA, the very same CPV, all of the same paid traffic sources we can use. And so I, I could take any client, any um any student, any coaching client, any entrepreneur, and flood their website with traffic. That's never a problem. That's not the problem. The problem is can we pay for that traffic? Right? Can we pay, how do we pay for that traffic? In conversions. 
right, in conversions. And so it's, it's always a focus on conversions. And that's why having a funnel, uh, an optimized funnel, and doing the funnel the right way, the way that I'm going to touch on in just a bit, is so critical today. Now let's talk about very quickly the most important customer acquisition metric in your business. And I want you to understand why this is the most important customer acquisition metric in your business. But the most important customer acquisition metric in your business, we've already established the fact that the front end, being able to convert prospects into customers, is the lifeblood of your business. It's what gives it sustainability. It's what gives it consistency. It's what will allow you to, um, to grow your business. As you put more and more customers into your back end, the back end is where you extra extract maximum profit, maximum value. That's where your company makes all of its money. And so hence, it's obvious then that the better your front end is, the better your front end marketing funnel is at dumping people into that back end funnel, the more money you are, your company is going to make. And so now let's talk about, well, there's one particular number that is more important than any other number when it comes to that front end. And I've already mentioned it. It's average visitor value. And average visitor value is how much, how much is the average visitor to your website worth to your business? How much is the average visitor um, to your website worth to your business? Meaning, out of every... $100 that you spend, uh, um, excuse me, out, yeah, out, out of every, excuse me, out of every 100 visitors that come to your website, for example, how much money do you make? So to go back for one second, we talked about, um, just a few minutes ago, we talked about an example of, so you get, I, I was talking to, uh, I was doing um, a consultation about an hour ago, right before this, um, this little training session, and so I was talking to a client, and we were talking about a particular opt-in page, and he was saying that um, that he's got an opt-in page, and the opt-in page generates uh, a right around 50% opt-in rate, give or take, from um, from cold traffic, and the, the 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 cold paid traffic source that he was using was solo ads, and so I said to him, all right, so what do you pay for? Um, for a hundred visitors to come to your website, and so he said, "Well, I said he said I pay about a hundred bucks to get two hundred unique visitors to my site, and that's through solo uh, solo email ads. Pays about a hundred bucks to get two hundred unique visitors to his site. So he gets two hundred unique visitors to his site with his current opt-in page. He generates he's generating fifty percent opt-in rate, meaning he gets a hundred people to opt-in. And then I said, out of those hundred people." I said, how many are you converting with your, uh, into your front end? How many of those people are being converted into a new customer? And he said, 7 to 8%. And so I said, OK, let's use the number 7%. So hypothetically, if he was selling a $100 product, let's say, if he was selling a $100 product, that means that he would be generating $700. Seven people um, out of the 100 opt-ins would buy his $100 front end product, meaning that he'd be generating $700. Now he only spent $100 to generate that traffic. So he's got very profitable, uh, it's very profitable um, traffic for him, or I should really say that he's profitably converting that traffic, right? Because, you know, that same source of traffic sent to somebody else's funnel might be worthless. The worth of the traffic is determined by the funnel, not the traffic. Let me say that again. The worth of the traffic is not determined by the traffic, the source, or what you paid for it. It's determined by the funnel, because it's the funnel that extracts the value. right? It's the funnel that converts those prospects into customers and brings you back money. And so he generated, he generated um, $700. And so $700, meaning um, he generated $700, he got um, 200, um, 200 visitors to his website. And so the way you figure out the average visitor value is you take the $700 that he generated and you divide it by the 200 visitors, and that tells you that an average visitor is worth $3.50 to him. $3.50 to him. Now that's, of course, just from that one source. 
You have to have an average. You have to know the average over all of your, of your sources. But why is this critical? Why did I say that this is the absolute most important metric, customer acquisition metric, for you to know? Because average visitor value tells you what you can afford to spend to generate a visitor to your website. Right? It tells you what you can afford to spend. You know, how do you know if you can afford to spend a dollar per click in AdWords to get a visitor if you don't know your average visitor value? Can you afford to spend a dollar? Can you afford to spend two dollars? Can you afford to spend three dollars? Or can you afford to spend five dollars? See, there's you know the the traffic is only as is only as expensive as as the value of a visitor to your site um, is valuable. In other words, it's all relative, right? Because look, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if um um. It, what what matters is how much is a visitor worth, and can I get a visitor to my website for that amount of money or less? Tells you a lot about what you can afford to spend to generate a visitor to your website. Now, I want to talk very quickly about this whole concept over here of spending. Right? I I didn't say this tells you what you can afford to um you know to do to generate a visitor. This this. This tells you what you can afford to spend, money. What can you afford to spend to get a visitor to your website? Well, I, I specifically say spend because, because of something that um, first hit me when I had a conversation with Rich Sheffrin at a little, coffee, uh, the li a little coffee cafe at a local Barnes & Noble in Boca Raton uh, down here in South Florida. We were having a conversation. This was when I first met Rich, uh, first started to become friendly with him about um, seven, eight years ago. And, uh, and one of the things that he said to me hit me like a, a ton of bricks. We were talking a lot about product launches. They were extremely hot back then. Um, and we were talking about uh, JVs, and we were talking about affiliates and whatnot. And Rich said to me, he said, you don't have a business. You don't have a sustainable business, a business that you can rely on, a business that you could bank on until you can use paid advertising to acquire new customers. Uh, you don't have a sustainable business, a sustainable business until you can afford to pay for customers, until you can use paid advertising to pay to acquire new customers. You see, because what he was saying was that was that when you have you know, and, and look, you know, like Ken said, I'm a huge fan of product launches. I went through the original product launch formula with Jeff. I was a, an original from many, many moons ago. Um, case study for him. Um, Jeff in, invited me to, uh, you know, I've been in, in, uh, a guest at, at, um, at events. I was a faculty member. He had me speak to his $10,000 per person product launch manager training. And so I love product launches. But the problem is that when your business is reliant on product launches, when it's solely reliant on JVs, when it's a reliant on affiliates, when it is reliant on SEO, when your business is completely reliant on those things, your business is extremely vulnerable because your business is when your business is reliant on product launches. That means your you 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 uh, your business only grows when you do a product launch, when you get partners, when partners agree to participate, when partners follow your launch instructions, when partners fully mail for you. Same thing with when your business is fully and solely reliant on. Um, on just affiliates and, and joint ventures, your business growth is totally dependent on whether marketers mail for you, whether they fulfill on their promises to, um, to, to, to mail, to endorse you, to send a promotion, to send multiple promotions. I can't tell you in the years that I ran the marketing as a partner at Strategic Profits, I cannot tell you how many marketers that you would know by name uh, either flaked out on a promotion that they agreed to do, said that they were going to mail something and then didn't mail it, um, or didn't mail what they were supposed to mail, or didn't mail at the right time, or didn't mail all the things that they were supposed to do. And then, of course, that doesn't even, we're not even touching on the fact that it then kind of leads you into this whole world of you scratch my back, I scratch your back. Now you've got to promote their stuff, meaning that you owe a whole bunch of affiliates. Now you've got to promote their stuff. What if you don't agree with the stuff that they're, they're selling? It can very quickly 
um, um, turn into a disaster, let alone the fact that you'll have ups and downs, you'll, you'll next, you know, your business is relying on affiliates or reliant on affiliates or joint ventures and before you know it, next week somebody's not mailing that was supposed to mail and now you've got no, no source of new customers coming into your business um, and so on. Am I saying that product launches, JVs and affiliates are bad? Absolutely not. Am I saying that they don't have any value? Absolutely not. Joint ventures are amazing. Affiliates, huge leverage. Product launch is one of the best things that you can do for your, for your business. What I am saying is that when your business is reliant on those things, it's vulnerable and it's not sustainable long term. When your business is able to acquire customers from paid advertising, sky's the limit. Because paid advertising, media buys, is the only scalable form of traffic generation. See, if you've got a, an offer, a marketing funnel that's working really well for you, and you have uh, you know, and, and all of your traffic is coming in just from search engine optimization, what can you do tomorrow to scale up that traffic, to get more traffic, um, so that you can put more people into, you know, more customers into your back-end funnel. You can't do anything. You can do anything tomorrow with, um, with search engine optimization. Even if you have the number one listing uh, for your number one term for your particular business, for your niche, um, what can you do to scale that up tomorrow? Nothing. What can you do to scale that up next week? Nothing, because there's only so many searches that take place, and there's only, only so many clicks that your number one SEO listing is going to get um, in, in, um, in Google. Same thing with joint venture partners. What can you do immediately tomorrow to scale it up? There's only so many days on the, uh, on the calendar. There's only so many people that will promote. There's only so much time for you to network and develop those relationships, yet with media buys, you can just scale up the media buy tomorrow. You can buy more media. You can expand your reach and scale up your traffic. And that's really the whole essence to kind of demystify uh, and simplify the whole growth, growing your business is really comes down to um, scaling your traffic via paid advertising once your funnel is allowing you to acquire new customers at no cost. Meaning, if I spend $100, I want to acquire $100 worth of new customers, and I want to do it in the shortest time possible. If I spend $1,000 or invest $1,000, my goal is to acquire $1,000 worth of new customers in the shortest period of time possible, right? And so I'm, in essence, I'm acquiring customers at no expense. I invest 1000 I get the 1000 back in, in the form of front-end um, transactions, in the form of products, you know, front-end products sold, and I get new customers that now get put into the back-end funnel that sells them on other products and services at higher price points with deeper value that give my, my company more and more profit, right? And so growing that, once you have that in place, growing that just becomes investing more and more money in media buys. That's why, as a side note, that's why the all else being equal, the marketer that invests the most amount of money in their marketing, as long as they are breaking even, meaning they're, they're, whatever they invest in their, their front end marketing, they're getting back in the acquisition of new customers, the marketer that invests the most wins the game. The marketer that invests the most wins the game. Well, in order to, you know, in, in order to do that, you certainly need to know uh, what your average visitor value is. And frankly, I will tell you that the marketer with the highest average visitor value is going to win the customer acquisition game, meaning that if the average visitor to um, your site is worth a dollar and you're competing with um, me and the average visitor to my site is worth three dollars because I have a better marketing funnel that's more, uh, that's strategically designed and optimized. Uh, you know, for you, uh, the average visitor is worth a dollar. For me, the, the, the average visitor is worth three dollars. I'm going to be able to crush you because I can do so many more things that you can't. I can leverage so many more traffic channels that you can't. Right? You can only spend up to a dollar to acquire a new customer. I could spend two dollars. I could spend three dollars. I could spend three times in this example what you are, um, and and um, and uh, and still break even. 
right? And so think about it. I can, if I wanted to leverage affiliates, joint ventures, if I wanted to use CPA to grow my, I can pay much more than you can, right? That's why if you can get a higher average visitor value, if you can engineer a higher, a higher average visitor value than your competitors, um, which you can do when you have the right funnel in place, you follow the right steps, which I'll talk about in just a bit, you'll never ever have to worry about getting traffic again, right? Because you can, you know, affiliates, um, JV partners, all those extra gravy um, sources, they're going to want to promote you because they'll get paid more with your funnel than they will your other competitors. As well, the higher your average visitor value goes, the more uh, the more traffic, the more paid traffic channels you can tap into to grow your business that other marketers, other competitors with a lower average visitor value just cannot do. So what determines your average visitor value? Well, I, I already really said it, and that is conversions, your marketing funnel, right? That's what determines your average visitor value. What determines your average visitor value is how well you convert prospects into customers. That value being the key word here, the value is extracted and determined by your marketing funnel. There's only value in a visitor because of your marketing funnel. And the better your marketing funnel does at conversion, the higher this value goes, right? And the higher that value goes, the more you dominate your marketplace, period. So conversions, your marketing funnel. So how do you boost average visitor value, right? Like, so what are the things that you can do to boost your visitor value? Well, I already said it, and that is with a strategically engineered and optimized customer acquisition marketing funnel. And so to kind of put a cap on, on this bad boy and maybe take some questions if, uh, if, if Ken wants to open it up to um, some questions, I want to list out and just very briefly um, expose you to some of the components of a strategically engineered and optimized uh, customer acquisition marketing funnel. And so these are different components, there are different components for a back end funnel, in other words a funnel that is designed to um, sell to an existing customer, um, it's different from when selling to prospects um, for obvious reasons. But I want to give you some of the components of a strategically designed front end marketing funnel. Now to give you a heads up, these are many of the things that I'll be covering at, um, at JV Alert Live in Arlington in a couple of weeks, Arlington, Virginia. And so let's talk about um, some of these. So one of the components is that your messaging is matched to, your, to what's called your prospect awareness level. And your prospect awareness level is, is basically there are, there are five different levels of prospect awareness. And you have to communicate with prospects differently based on what level of awareness they're at, what level of awareness they're at in terms of their own problem, what level of awareness they're at in terms of you, your company. What do they know about you, your company, your product, your track record, your history? Um, what do they know about competitors, other products? What do they know about their current situation, their, their, the current problem that they're facing, um, and so on. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into prospect awareness level. But having a strategically engineered and optimized funnel is having a funnel where the messaging in that funnel, the, the, what you actually say and communicate, matches, lines up with, addresses where the prospect is at in their awareness level. Well, same thing for the market sophistication, right? There's something called market sophistication. And market sophistication is based on the history of marketing and advertising for a particular product in a particular niche. And so, you know, obviously there's a lower level of sophistication for a new market um, that hasn't yet been exposed to um, to uh, a, a ton of advertising and promises and marketing hype and whatnot. And so when you're communicating with a market of lower sophistication, you communicate differently than when you're talking to a market with a higher level of sophistication. One of the problems that I see, or one of the mistakes that I see marketers make on a routine basis is putting out a, a marketing promise you know, having a headline, let's say on a squeeze page or a sales letter or a VSL 
having a big promise, a big benefit statement um, that is um, too low on the sophistication level for the market meaning that um, that it's going to cause the market to mentally opt out right away when they reach their squeeze page or when they get to their VSL because the, the market sophistication level is beyond the sophistication level of their messaging. And so you need to understand that. Uh, there, there's um, something, and this again I learned from Michael Masterson, there's something called the big idea. And it's you know, the days of being able to scream benefits and, and huge uh, hyped up promises uh, on your headlines, those days are quickly evaporating um, because of the amount of marketing messages that people are exposed to on a daily basis. The trust level isn't there anymore the way it once was, and especially there's a lower level of trust by a certain mediums or certain marketing channels. Um, and one of the lowest is the internet. There's, you know, the internet is one of the least trusted sources of information um, when it comes to marketing because people know that it's not regulated like direct mail is or um, like you know stuff on the telephone. Let's just say over the internet, it's it's still for the most part in most niches the wild west right now. And so in order to prevent that mental opt out and in order to grab attention um, and and get prospects to consume your message, your message needs to be backed by a big idea. And this is one of the things, um, I actually I'll be covering all three of these things um, in a couple of weeks. Um, your big promise, that the promise that you do use that stems from your big idea needs to be backed by a unique mechanism. What is the unique mechanism, the unique delivery mechanism in your promise that is going to deliver the results? To, um, to your prospect. What is the unique mechanism within your product or service, your marketing, that's going to deliver the results? And this really ties back to market sophistication level. And so I'm going to break this down. You need to have a differentiated lead magnet, uh, differentiated from competitors, differentiated in your marketplace, and not just a differentiated lead magnet in terms of topic of the lead magnet, what you actually use or what you actually talk about to generate the the um, the opt-in into your funnel, but you need to have differentiated lead magnet benefits and what I call differentiated lead magnet delivery vehicle. You need to, and this is a huge one. You need to have your your funnel needs to be based around what I call EBM content or education-based marketing content, and the education-based marketing content. We're not just educating for the sheer sake of education. I've seen so many marketers that that they just educate, like they'll teach as part of their marketing, and there's no strategy behind the information that they're putting out. They kind of they have an email autoresponder in place or something like that, and they're sending out messages because they know that that's what they should be doing, and there's no strategy behind it. Well, the goal of your EBM content, your main funnel content, is to establish certain beliefs in the prospect because there are certain things that they need to believe in order to buy. And the objective of your EBM content, your funnel content, is to establish those beliefs. You need to have uh, a preponderance of diverse proof points. We teach over 11 different proof elements to our clients. And so obviously, you, you know, without proof in your EBM content, all you're doing is just making claims. As, a, um, as an advertiser. You need to have multiple engagement paths and sequences. This means that you just don't send people through the same exact funnel, uh, you know, the same follow-up sequence, like regardless of whether they're watching your videos or listening to your audios or downloading your, your PDFs. No, those days are long over. That was something I did 10 years ago, where somebody opts in and then they get email one, email two the next day, email three the next day, email four the next day, regardless of whether they read one email or two emails or three emails, everybody goes through the same thing. Those days are gone thanks to certain um, certain um, changes to technology. Today we can put people through different paths and different sequences based on how they engage with your content. And so it allows us to move people through the buying cycle um, at their own pace rather than trying to force them to go through it faster than they would ordinarily or slower than they would ordinarily. And so I show a few examples of this. I'll be showing a few examples of this at JV uh, Alert Live. Dynamic multi-channel content based on prospect behavior, how to present your product or service and have it highlight the three different benefit types 
Um, I, I'm going to share that also, but that's another aspect of a strategically engineered optimized funnel. It's not just about dumping out features and, and giving the typical um, style of benefits. There are actually three different benefits, three different uh, ways to present any benefit um, for every feature of your product or service, and you need to know how to do it, and you need to be doing it in your funnel. Of course, you need to have a unique um, and you know irresistible offer. I hate using that word irresistible because it seems like it's played out, but you need to understand how to construct an irresistible offer, what make up the components, and it needs to be um, delivered um, in your marketing funnel. And then, of course, you need to have a, a low abandonment order vehicle. In other words, you need to have a way for your, you need to have, whether it's an order form or a shopping cart, I like, uh, and, and we use and teach clients um, and use with our consulting clients, order forms, standalone order forms, because um, we've tested and tracked and optimized what those order order uh, form should look like, but regardless, you need to have a low abandonment uh, vehicle for individuals to order, and then finally, you need to have a refund reduction process and a stick sequence, meaning you need to have a way for, you need to have a process in place that reduces the likelihood of refunds um, and makes the sale um, stick, in other words, retains the um, customers. And so these are some of the components of the of a strategically engineered and optimized customer acquisition marketing funnel, many of which, most of which, I'll be covering at the JV uh, Alert Live in Arlington. And so if you haven't registered yet, I would really encourage you to register. I don't get paid or make money if you register um, after this event or anything like that. Um, obviously, I think you should be there for no other reason than just to, uh, to hear my full presentation. I think that um, it, it'll be worth its weight in gold for you. I know it would have been for me many years ago when I was um, really starting out and, and, and starting to grow my, my business. But if not for my presentation alone, you really should be there just for the networking, the relationships, the opportunities that you'll get there that you, uh, you really just can't get anywhere else. And so with that being said, I'm going to turn it back over to Ken. If there are any questions, I'm, uh, I'm down to take questions. If not, uh, and there are no questions, I want to thank everybody for being here today. I appreciate your time, and I look forward to meeting you uh, in Arlington, Virginia. Thanks so much, Todd. That was a great presentation. Uh, lots of fantastic information. And having watched uh, your presentation down in Orlando, I know that you've got so much more to to give. And uh, the people who come to Arlington will experience, uh, you know, a lot of the back end of, of uh, what you're looking at, all those points that you made at the near the end of your presentation that you didn't have time to uh, cover today. That's going to be in Todd's uh, presentation there, JV Alert Live. And of course, one of the big advantages of being at JV Alert Live is the intimate environment in which you get to spend time with uh, people like Todd and other uh, amazing entrepreneurs. So you definitely want to get to Arlington if you possibly can. JVAlertLive.com, it's up there on the screen for you. I uh, do have a couple of questions and some comments. If anybody else has uh, questions and comments, just type them into the chat window. Or if you like, you can raise your hand, and I will unmute you, and you can ask your question directly to Todd live. Um, so a couple of questions and comments. Uh, actually, Dwan Sullivan heard you down in Orlando and said that you gave a lot of great information. It's a lot like drinking from a fire hose. Keep up the good work, Todd. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, there was a little bit of editing going on of some of your uh, comments. <laughs> um, and um, uh, the translation was basically you, uh, you don't have a sustainable business until you can afford to pay for marketing for paid business. You know, uh, I think paid advertising is actually something that is pretty scalable. You can start out uh, at a low um, level of, uh, of engagement and then build it if you know what your figures are on the back end. Isn't that true? Yeah, I mean, there, you know, there are, you know, look, there are certain media buys that, um, you know, are, it's going to be big money, that it, it's going to require, you know, big money to get into. But then there's a whole bunch of other opportunities that um, you could 
uh, you know, you could spend, you know, 30 bucks, 50 bucks. You could, you know, and that's where, you know, scaling the business comes in. I'm not saying you, sh you should go out and, and spend, uh, you know, right off the bat, spend $5,000 on, on marketing. I, I would tell you absolutely do not do that. I personally, um, I bootstrapped my company when I first got online a little bit over 10 years ago, spent 850 bucks and said I'm not going to spend any more of my own money, everything else that I spend, I'm going um, to generate from the business first. And, and that's what I did. I invested $850 to like form you know, a corporation, get a merchant account, a domain name, hosting, and I never spent another dime to this day of my own money that wasn't first generated from the, um, the business. And so getting back to the media buying, you absolutely should start small, bootstrap it. There are opportunities like, for example, we were talking about the solo email ads, where if you could, you know, you could spend 30 bucks or 50 bucks and, and get 100, um, 100 unique visitors to your site. Well, very quickly, you'll see from the 50 bucks or 30 bucks, whatever it may be, um, what type of conversion rate you, you have, and more importantly, what the average visitor value is, what the return on investment is, and that'll tell you, you know, very quickly. You'll be able to see. Look, if if a you know if you if you do a small test uh, and you get 100 unique visitors, then you go and you you could pay a little bit more to get 200 unique visitors, and you'll start to see um, a statistically valid. Um, trend or a statistically valid number that you can rely on that allow you to scale up and then look once you know here's a perfect example once you know how much a visitor is worth let's say it's worth it's worth a, a dollar to you well then you could just go and do more solo ads and as long as you're paying less than a dollar per unique visitor and the thing with something like you know um, solo email ads is you can often just pay specifically for unique visitors on a targeted list. So they'll tell you it's going to cost you $100 for 200 unique visitors. It's going to cost you, you know, $200 for 400 unique visitors. It's going to cost you 500 for 1000 unique visitors. Well, look, if you're paying $500 for 1000 unique visitors, that's only 50 cents a um a a, a unique a, a unique visitor. Well, if a visitor is worth 50 cents or more to your business, then that's great. Right, it, you know that you're gonna um, you're gonna recoup your ad spend. You're gonna recoup that five hundred dollars um, in the form of new customers. And now you've got the five hundred dollars back, and you could go out and invest it again the next day. But you also now have a whole bunch of new customers that you're now putting through a back end funnel that's gonna sell them other um, quality products and services that's gonna deliver value and extract uh, profit from them. Great, fantastic. Uh, here's another question for you. What are three of the best paid traffic services that you recommend and personally use? Um, well, that's a tough question to answer because every niche is um, is different. There are some niches that, let's say, don't lend themselves as well to um, to the bigger media buys. For example, um, you know, one of the companies that um, that I still own and um, and operate or lead, I should say, uh, is a company that um, sells products and services to chiropractors. Well, that's an example of a narrow niche that doesn't doesn't lend itself to the same type of media buying that um, let's say we do for uh, with a client that sells vitamin supplements um, nationally and internationally. For more narrowed niches, you've got to go with more narrowed media buying. For example, with a you know if you're if you're selling to um, let's say carpet cleaners, for example, then you're you're not going to go to the same media buying resources. You're going to go to websites that um, that uh, are for carpet cleaners, and you're going to do potentially banner advertising on their site. You might do direct mail, list rental. You might do some small space um, advertising in any of the offline magazines or journals that go to carpet cleaners. You might do some solo email ads, email broadcasts <clears throat> to carpet cleaners. Whereas for a company that's selling something like um, you know vitamin supplements, you would do more um, global, bigger universe stuff because you have a much larger audience. And so it really depends on the... Um, on the on the niche and the product, the, the audience. Tough to say. Yeah. Um, here's another question for you. Does your company come with a done-for-you marketing system that embraces what you're uh, teaching? 
Um, no, marketing, you know, one of the things that we do, let's say, for, um, for chiropractors, for example, is, yes, for chiropractors, we have a proprietary technology that's been developed over X number of years that um, does all the stuff that I'm talking about. But for mar the marketing funnel automation brand, which is less than a year old, um, no, it's, it, it's all about um, teaching um, my clients over an eight-week period all of the, the strategies and tactics that are used by the biggest and most successful direct response companies so that they can develop their own funnel because every product is different. The whole idea that, and this is something that um, I, I've talked about on the Marketing Funnel Automation blog um, and, uh, and is a pet peeve of mine, this whole idea that you can go out and, and buy a template for a website or a plugin and, uh, and you have a, a, a complete funnel set up is just garbage. And that's the kind of stuff that just takes money from people that just don't know any better. At the end of the day, look, I'd love to be able to tell you that there's no work involved and all you're going to do is push a button on your computer based on a, a, a $97 piece of software that I'm going to sell you. Um, and I'd love to be able to tell you that, but that's just not the case. At least I don't know, out of all the entrepreneurs that I know that um, have eight-figure businesses and up, um, and you know, I was fortunate to be around some of the smartest, sharpest, most successful entrepreneurs on this planet at Strategic Profits, from hanging around with people like Clayton Makepeace and, again, Michael Masterson, spending a bunch of time with Jay Abraham, and then, of course, all of our affiliates, uh, like the, the big JV partners um, and, and strategic alliances uh, within the internet marketing community. I can tell you that um, everybody works hard on their business. Developing a marketing funnel that allows you to truly uh, generate new customers from, um, from paid advertising, it's tough work. But the benefit is that once you have that in place, you have ultimate scalability in your business. Your business will never lack in growth, in cash flow, in revenue, and you will never lack in income when you can do that. See, that's really the holy grail. The holy grail is not this made up, mystical, push button method that'll get you number one rankings on Google. See, because even number one rankings on Google are insignificant if you don't have a way to convert that traffic into paying customers. Nothing else is more valuable to your business than being able to um, convert those prospects. And when you can do that, that is the holy grail. That is uh, when you've reached the promised land and problems, uh, you know, problems related to business growth just disappear. Fantastic. And thanks so much for being with us, uh, taking this extra time to answer some questions for our group. Uh, it's always a pleasure to get a chance to listen to you and uh, see the insights that you have for all of our uh, members of the JV Alert Live family. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in Arlington. I hope everybody that's on this call will be able to join us there. If you haven't signed up, it's May 17th, 18th, and 19th. It's in Arlington, Virginia. You don't want to miss it uh, because it can change your life, literally. So um, everybody go out to JV Alert Live and come down, meet um, Todd. I'll be happy to personally introduce you to anybody there at the event. There are going to be some incredible people there, so definitely be there. Thanks again, Todd, for all of your insights. I'm looking forward to more and seeing you at JV Alert Live in Arlington. Thank you, too, Ken. Looking forward to seeing you and looking forward to, uh, to seeing everybody else. Thank you guys for your time, and I look forward to seeing you uh, JV Alert Live. See you there. Bye-bye, everybody.